uh, US Olympic gymnastic history, and then all the world winner of activities after that. Explain what, what that has been like, and how do you maintain your fitness, your preparedness, when you're on a tour? Yes. Um, so this year has been very crazy, uh, but we've had a lot of success, and everything that we've done has been fun um, because uh, that we we're so successful. But after the Olympics, we got to do so many amazing opportunities, uh, me and the rest of the final five. So I think that was pretty cool for us to do, but I think it's time for a vacation. So that's why we came down here with the family to spend time with it, um, and then maintaining my body shape and everything. Um, we went on tour right after the Olympics and it was like for two months. So we were still working out on the tour and doing shows. But then since then I've kind of had a break on my body and I'm gonna take some time off from gymnastics before I start back into it. No, if you if you look at your time here, will you be allowed to indulge as you wish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not traveling with a fitness coach. No, I'm by myself, so that's good. <laughs> All right, and then explain uh, how, how you are, are preparing for the next Olympics because yes. you're still reasonably young for a gymnast <laughs> because you know um, it's, a, it's a limited age that can go yes. So, whenever I start training again, I will have to uh, start doing two a day. So, I'll work out twice a day, Monday through Saturday, and then I have Sundays off. So, it's kind of the same workout regimen that I had before for this Olympics. Um, so I'm at first I'll have to start doing basics so I get back into shape, but other than that, you don't change your routine too much. Uh, first, paper current television news. Simone, little has been said about your education. Um, can you speak to that and also how important is that for you, apart from being the world's best female <laughs> gymnast? Um, education has always been a, been very important to me and to my family. They always say um, school before gymnastics, which I have, but I did graduate a year and a half ago from high school, and then I took a year off so that I could focus on the Olympics, and since everything is so crazy and it is a whirlwind, I'm waiting for everything to slow, slow down to start school again. They do think that uh, coming out of Rio that you actually got the rightful accolades that you should have gotten or do you think that that was played down a little bit? Um, no, I think it was pretty good because once we went back to the States, we were literally everywhere. Um, and every time we turned on the TV, we were everywhere. So it was kind of crazy seeing myself everywhere. And I just wanted to get a break from myself because <laughs> everywhere I looked, it was my face. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, what word of advice would you have for um, our athletes here in Belize in terms of perseverance and really going for what you want in your career, whether it be um, a job, whether it be sports, uh, what would you share with some of our young people? Um, I would say to never give up, and I know that there will be hard days, some harder than others, but you can always push through it, and it's amazing how um, how mind over matter is. It is pretty crazy how strong your mind can be when you put yourself and um, you say you want to do something and then you can achieve it. I think we'll, Adele from the Mandela newspaper. Um, talk to us a little bit about your experience with ADHD. We hear that more young people are now being diagnosed. I myself have a son with ADHD and uh, when your story came up in the media, I used you as an example to motivate him. Um, talk with us about the challenges that you face growing up as a young girl, a young person, having to deal with ADHD and how gymnastics actually helped you in coping. Yes, um, whenever I was a little bit younger, I was just kind of very hyper all the time, running around. Um, so I did go to the doctor, I was diagnosed, but to me it wasn't, I didn't think of it any, anything like different. I was just like, okay, well, I just need medicine to calm it down. But other than that, I still did everything the same, but I had a little bit of trouble concentrating in school um, and in gym on certain things. So once I got medicated, it was a little bit better, um, just so that I could focus whenever I needed to so that everything would be better. So what would you say to a young people who are battling with the statements of how you can deal with um, not just ADHD, but you have the whole autism spectrum, you have ADHD, what would you tell them? Um, 
I still think we're just like any other kid. Um, I think sometimes we're just a little bit more hyperactive, but other than that, it's fine. Great. Now, there were many media interviews where you talked a lot about your life. Um, we here in Belize, we read a lot of your story. And uh, of course, your story with your mom came up. Um, can you tell us if since you've been in Rio, has there been any development in that front? Sorry, your biological no mother, has yes. there been any development in that front? Um, no, it was just like before. Um, she does call on the holidays and everything, and she does wish me good luck and stuff like that. But other than that, it's kept to a minimum, um, just because I need to decide whenever I'm ready. Okay. And so now you're here in the leaves, the great fan fair, you will be a great motor king, and uh, the world is watching. <laughs> this, all that you've done, since you mentioned this in your interviews, you raised the profile. Uh, did you expect that the gestures that you made in recognizing the leaves would yield the results that you're yielding today? Um, I don't think so. I think everyone talks about like where they left school and vacation. For me, I didn't think it was anything crazy, but then it did blow up. So it's cool that I got to come for the Christmas time to bring the family. All right, and so what is the number one thing on your list to do while you're here in the Um, Just spend time with family. I haven't got to do a lot of it this whole entire year because I've been busy and traveling all over. So that's the main thing. Hi, Simone, we know that you recently released Courage to Soar. Talk to us a little about that and why it was important for you to tell your story via book. Um, I think it was important to inspire other kids that they read my story, they can do anything, um, just like I said that as a kid. But other than that, I thought it was different how everyone told my story for me, so I thought it was a very good idea for me to tell it myself and for them to read it and to just hear it from me because I think that's the most important rather than everybody telling it for me. If a believing child should read your book, what would you want him or her to take away from that? Um, that even professional or elite athletes, we all go through something in our life even though it doesn't seem like it because we are successful, but we still have bumps in, um, in the road, too, as well. I think about a day or two ago, you tweeted, I know you're an avid tweeter, you tweeted that uh, you were feeling a bit emotional. Talk to us a little about that. Um, I guess it's just hard being in the limelight a lot, and everyone is judging everything I do, so sometimes <laughs> I wish it wasn't like that. Um, because to me, it, to me, it's just like, I just went to the Olympics like it was my goal, but I didn't think it should be blown up as much as it did. Um, so I just kind of wish it was a little bit on the down low, but it's you use social media a lot. I know that you're on Snapchat and you're always snapping the things that you're doing. Uh, what advice would you give to our own athletes here in terms of balancing, you know, their their professional lives with incorporating social media and balancing the use of that? I don't know. I just kind of use it as an outlet for other teens or kids or whoever's watching it to get an out and look in my life because they always see me whenever I'm competing but they don't see like my personalities whenever I'm outside of the gym so I think it's fun for them to watch that because it's like that's me rather than just on the floor and stuff. Right. And uh, finally we know in the U.S. Uh, the, the issue of race it's, it's been you know all across the media I think you as perhaps a black African-American it's, it's also there how, you know, are you able to perhaps share with us just some of the things that uh, if, you, if you are able to share, uh, we've seen different celebrities, personalities speak out on the race issue. What's, what's your sentiment, something like that? Um, I don't really have a comment. Sam, black and I'm proud. I've always 
always stuck with it, and it's something I've always wanted to do, but being so young, I never really dreamed at the Olympics. Um, it didn't become a reality until maybe I was 15 years old. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Again to Simone, the nation of Belize, welcome.